Another technique for finding numerical solutions to differential equations is the Runge-Kutta method. This is actually very similar to Euler's method. That's one reason why we do Euler's method first. Um, but what Runge-Kutta method does is it still does iterative process. We're still gonna find the next y term from the previous y term. But instead of h times the slope, we're gonna do h times this weighted average. And this weighted average is some w1 times k1 plus w2 times k2, and keep adding this up till you get to wn times km. m is your order of your method. k1 through km of each function of f, evaluate as some point, and w1 through wm is your weights. And the reason this is known as a weighted average is because basically we're adding these up these weights will um, get us to the answer we want. Um, so the weights that W1 if let's say we have a K4 so we're going to do a K4 actually I'll go to the next page with that I think I've got it on there we're gonna do um, a K4, which means a fourth order of Runge Kutta. Um, we're gonna find the nth one by doing y sub one plus h over six times k1 plus two k2 plus two k3 plus k4. So this is again, a still a weighted average. It's just that here we had to do a little bit more work for those weights of what to do with this. Now when we have a fourth order, the weights will become this. So the weights are one, two, two, one. It's actually the one, six, two, six, two, six, one, six, and that's where that six came from. K1 is your function evaluated at x, at your first x, first y. Your K2 is your function evaluated at xn plus half of an h. So you're gonna move over just a little bit. And your yn is gonna be half of h times that K1. Um, your K3 will be your function of at X2 plus again that half H. Your Y2 would be, your next Y would be Y sub N plus one half H K2. So it's using the K2. And K4 is F of XN plus H. So you can move up the whole H. And then YN plus H times K3. So this is not the easiest of things to do. It's kind of actually, it's not that hard. It's just tedious to do. And you have to really watch what you're doing. We're gonna do one example of this. We're gonna use the Runge-Kutta method with um, h equals 0.1 to obtain a fourth decimal approximation to y of 0.5. For y prime equals x squared plus y squared. y of zero equals one. Now I will point out that a Runge-Kutta method um, that is of order one is just Euler's method. So if you don't have all of these pieces here, if you just have order one, then you just have this very first term and that is Euler's method. So they come from, the Wunga came from Euler's method, it's built on Euler's method. Um, and then it goes a little bit more than that. To do this, the best thing to do is kind of set yourself up a table. So we'll set ourselves up a table with x n and your y sub n. My first x n was zero and my y is one because we were using this y zero one, this initial condition. I am doing an h of 0.1. So again, what I like to think about having here is a number line here. We're starting here at zero for x. We're gonna add 0.1. Add point one, add point one, add point one, and add point one. So we have to go through this whole process to get all the way up to here and find out what those are. So um, that means we're going to find out what x and which of point one is equal to and find out what that equals. To do that, y1 is equal to y0 plus point one over six times k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4. And so what we have to do is find out what each one of these k's are, and then we can put them in. 
So K1 would be your function evaluated at your X0, Y0. So it might help you to have another column here with your ends. So we know N1, this is N0, this is N1. So that means we're gonna evaluate our function at zero, one. So if I value my function at zero, one, X is zero, Y is one, we're gonna get one for that. K2 is my function evaluated at X zero plus one half times my H of point one. Then my Y um, is gonna be Y zero plus one half times my, um, my x, what was it? My um, h, which is 0 0.1, times my k1, and k1 was one. Okay. So you just have to find out what all of this is. Um, your y1, of course, was, your y0, of course, was one. Your x0 was, of course, zero. So you can go and find out what that is. And we get that this is 1.105. Your K3 is F of X0 plus one half times 0.1. Y0 plus one half times your H of 0.1 times your K2, which was 1.105. And so that gets us to, I'm gonna need a little bit more space, 1.11605 Then I gotta find K sub four. K sub four is your function evaluated at X zero plus H plus 0.1. And then your Y zero plus, um, your one, because it's H, so 0 0.1, times your um, K3. K3 was 1.11605256363. And so we find out that that is equal to 1.1245 six six zero two four six we're not actually there yet we still need to find y1 y1 is equal to your y0 which was one plus your h of 0 0.1 over six times these k's that we just found your k1 which was one two times your k2 which was 1.105 plus two times your K3, which was 1.11605256363, plus your K4, which was 1.12456602246. And we end up with 1.11146-2856. And that is what your y sub one is. So this is 1.11146-2856. And that's just y one. We wanna know that's just f, the, the function value at 0.1. We wanted the y value at 0.5. So we have to go through the exact same process we just did and do this over and over and over again to get all the rest of these values. As I said, this is very, very tedious. It's not a hard process, it's just very, very tedious. So this is why people preferred Euler's method over Runga-Kutta, because it just was very tedious. But the Runga-Kutta method actually works very nicely now that we have computers. So we're not gonna finish this problem out because we're gonna use computers to actually find out what this answer is. You would never do Runga Kuta by hand.